Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Welcome to today's video. So in this video today, I want to talk about the importance of the PTE speaking section, specifically when it comes to pronunciation. Yes, to your pronunciation. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube, on Facebook, on this channel, from that institute, from that coaching center. And whenever I see something that doesn't make sense, that's totally wrong, I have like a switch that goes off in my head and I get very angry. And that's when I get the ideas to bring you guys something valuable. So specifically, I want to debunk the importance of pronunciation or why it's important in some questions and it's not that important in other questions. So I watched a video the other day and this guru was saying that pronunciation is so important. You have to make sure you speak clearly every single word. And <laughs> ignore that part, I'm not trying to make fun of everybody. But long story short, I saw a lot of messages afterwards and a lot of people commenting that hey, I improved my pronunciation, but I failed my speaking. How is this possible? So this is why I wanted to make this video. I'm gonna tell you what's the only important thing when it comes to your pronunciation. And the truth is in your PT speaking section, pronunciation is not that important everywhere. So what I mean is, let me backtrack a little bit and I want you guys to understand how does the system work, okay? So as you know, in the speaking section, you got your read aloud, You've got your repeat sentences, you've got your describe image, retell lecture, and answer short questions. The fact is that pronunciation only matters in one of those tasks a lot, and in a second task, a little bit. So what do I mean? How does the system give you marks in pronunciation? Did you ever think about that? How does the system know if you're good at pronouncing certain words or not? So let's take these, uh, for example, the describe image part of speaking, okay? We use a format, other places use formats. Some students, they're just very fluent, so they don't really need to use a format. But let's say, for example, I have to describe this image. Imagine you get a picture of this in your exam, and you have to speak continuously about this for up to 40 seconds, okay? So somebody can use a format. I've got a very beautiful image in front of me, let me. <laughs> Or some people can do it, you know, the image in front of me is a picture and it is providing the information about markers. On the screen I can see different colors. The first color I can see is the black color which is representing the top of the box. In the middle part of the image I can see the white color which is the background of the cardboard. The last color I can see is red and green which is representing the two markers at the bottom. Overall this picture is about a different markers in a box in a package. So what I did just now, I didn't actually follow any format, right? I just freestyled it and I did it on the spot but you will notice I was speaking continuously and I was speaking without pauses. So the computer, whenever it marks your described image specifically, it has no idea what you're about to say, right? So again, if we're talking about this, somebody can talk just about the markers. Somebody can talk about the shape of the box. Somebody can talk about the colors of the box. Somebody could actually say some of the headings, some of the titles. So if I give this image, to 20 different people, all 20 of those people will do it in a totally different way. Makes sense, right? Nobody's gonna say the exact same thing over and over. So when it comes to your described image, for example, your pronunciation is not important. But what's important is that when you're reading the heading or you're reading the title, if there is a title, of course that part you have to say pretty clearly. But one thing you need to know, is that most of your pronunciation score on your score report will come from your read aloud, read aloud. And a lot of you probably watched uh, our previous video, which is this one right here, about the importance of read aloud and a special secret tool that we recommend to students in order to check the clarity of their speech. So how does your pronunciation mostly come from read aloud? Imagine you have a hundred words, right? So imagine my read aloud is like three, four sentences and in total is a hundred words. And imagine that maybe you are somebody who speaks very clearly and whenever you speak, every single word is clear and it's easily understandable by anybody, right? But maybe you made one or two mistakes. So would it be fair to say that if you got 98 out of those hundred words correct, your accuracy would be 98%. Of course it makes sense, right? So what I'm trying to explain to you guys 
is that for read aloud for their system, whenever it checks your marking, it's very easy for them to identify what is your accuracy or what is your clarity. Because in read aloud, you've got 100 words, and if you said 50 of them clearly, and the other 50 you mumbled and you didn't open your mouth, of course your accuracy will be 50%. And of course, as you know, the score is out of 90, so they will just convert this to whatever the percentage is according to your read aloud. So again, I want to emphasize this is very, very important because this will contribute most of your marks towards your pronunciation. And of course, as you saw in the previous video, it will also contribute a lot of marks towards your reading section. But most of your pronunciation will come from here. Now, the second task that also contributes a lot of marks towards your pronunciation is the task called repeat sentence, right? Now, why is that? Again, repeat sentence, it's very predictable. You might get 10 sentences, which are 10 words each, which in total would be 100 words. And depending how clearly you said those 100 words, it's easy for them to identify what is your pronunciation. But what you need to keep in mind, the sample size in repeat sentences is a lot smaller than the sample size in read aloud. Because in read aloud, you might get minimum two but maximum up to even five or six sentences. And a lot of them are lengthy, like 15, 16, 14 words. So of course, you've got a big bucket of water to draw from. You've got a big sample size. Whereas for repeat sentences, if I got 10 or 12 of these, I might only have 100 words in total for all the repeat sentences. So if you're one of those people that's really worried about your pronunciation, and we get messages all the time, uh, hi, Dream English, uh, my name is so-and-so, and you know, I'm struggling in speaking, my pronunciation is not good. I want you to rest assured. If your, I'll write with a black color. If your pronunciation score is more than 40, or let's be on the safe side. If your pronunciation score is more than 45, this is more than enough to pass your exam and to even get 90 out of 90 in the speaking section. And our video guy is gonna put a few results here and here and here and here and here and here. So what do you see with all of these students in common? And Justin, just keep this on the screen so they can see it, okay? The first thing I want you guys to look at is their oral fluency. What is their oral fluency? 90, 90. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. What is the pronunciation? You see some people are getting 40s, some people are getting 50s, 51, 43, 48, and I'll try to find one more. I had one student that she got 38 in pronunciation. At the same time, she was still able to get 79 plus in all of the sections. So how is this possible? Look, your pronunciation only matters to a certain extent. If I did a really good job in my read aloud and I did okay my repeat sentences, but in describe image or retail lecture, I'm speaking a little bit fast, or some parts I mumble, but I really focus on my fluency. Of course, it might affect my pronunciation a little bit, but it will not affect my overall score that much. Because content in a question like describe image, it's not as important compared to read aloud, right? And another question again, in which pronunciation matters? In retail lecture. But retail lecture, there's a million different ways to do it. Somebody could follow a format. Uh, the speaker was giving a speech in relation to this topic. First of all, he mentioned about the importance of blah, 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 blah. Secondly, he discussed blah, blah, right? So that's an example if somebody was to follow a format. But some people just freestyle, right? They go, well, um, the speech was talking about this lady called Mary Mellon, and they also mentioned that she came to the United States and she was infected with typhoid fever, and she was locked up in isolation for three decades, and she blah, 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 blah. So this way, if my comprehension of the audio is really good, and I'm getting really good notes, I can again freestyle and just speak naturally. As long as my notes are clear, I will be getting the content marks towards listening. And same thing goes for short answer questions. A lot of you don't even spend time practicing it because it's not that difficult, which is fine. But if you say the answers somewhat clearly, like for example, what is the first day of the week? Justin, what do you call the first day of the week? Monday. Monday, right? So Justin said it, he mumbled a little bit, but I could understand that it's Monday. And maybe you heard that it's Monday as well, right? But if you say, 
Of course, nobody's gonna get that, right? So it's common sense, guys. Why, why did I make this video? Like, I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but why did I make this video? I got really frustrated when I get students and they message us and they're like depressed. And every day I deal with messages, Alex, I'm so frustrated, I wanna give up. Should I switch to another English test? Should I try something else, right? And the thing is they get demoralized and demotivated because it looks like they're getting a low mark even though they're working so hard. But in reality is they're making some really crucial mistakes in the questions where it's really important, right? So many of you might be struggling with the speaking section and you're worried about your pronunciation. But then you go on different websites and you practice your speaking and you wait till your pronunciation is five out of five, which doesn't really mean anything by the way. But what happens in the exam, you fail again. Why? Because you're slowing down too much. And you start to read, once you've picked a general topic for your paper. So you start to read too slow, or you start to pause in between, you know, because you're too worried about this thing, and you're not worried about your fluency and the other content, okay? So let me kind of bring it to a full circle and let me summarize it. If you're worried about your speaking section, that's fine. That's something that's fixable, it's very easy for us to fix. But what I don't want you to worry is about your pronunciation. The only time you should really worry and get like panicked about your pronunciation, if your pronunciation score is between 10 to 25. If your pronunciation is between 10 to 25, then you might have an issue with your voice pitch, or it could be breathing, or it could be a number of other things. So I think we have two or three videos that Justin's gonna post here and here, where we talk about different reasons for failing speaking and pronunciation issues and so on. But if your pronunciation is more than 40 or more than 45, I can assure you that you're good enough to pass your speaking. You're good enough to not only get 79, you're actually good enough to get 90 in speaking if your pronunciation is more than 40 or 45. So what I tell my students in class when they tell me, Alex, I'm so worried my pronunciation is not good. Look, is it more than 40? Yes. Let me worry about your pronunciation, okay? You focus on oral fluency, you focus on understanding the content and memorizing the templates. Let me worry about your pronunciation. So when you guys are practicing, pronunciation is only really, really important in your read aloud, and it's to a certain degree important in repeat sentences. But repeat sentence comes to your practice, right? Like in the exam under the pressure, let's say you're repeating a sentence like, basketball was created in 1981 by a physician, a physical instructor. You don't sit in the exam and go, basketball was created and you're gonna fail your test because repeat sentence is testing your short-term memory. So if you mispronounce one or two words, it's not gonna fail you your exam. But the one that you can control is your read aloud. But I really wanna stress the fact that your fluency is also very important. So don't focus too much and read one word at a time because you will fail your test. You still have to maintain that flow. Like the flow right now with which I'm speaking, there are not a lot of gaps and interruptions. You see my lips keep moving continuously and I haven't shut up for more than half a second this whole video. This is the flow, this is the fluency. Of course, pronunciation is something we can fix. So again, this was kind of a very short video, but it's something that I grew extremely frustrated with. And when I see like nonsense on YouTube and on Facebook and your Telegram and WhatsApp groups, I just feel like because we've been doing this a long time and as tutors, we have a lot of knowledge that, you know, we cannot um, put everything on YouTube because it's like hundreds of hours of knowledge in our head, right? But whenever I see people that are studying in the wrong way and they're too focused on one area, which is not important, it drives me nuts. So I felt responsible to make this video and I hope it brought you guys some value. If it did, you know what to do. Click like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if you're struggling in your speaking with your oral fluency and your pronunciation and your speaking score. And I will personally check each one of them and reply to you and give you feedback on what are the things you have to focus on. Until next time, this is Alex from Dream English and I will see you in the next video. So this is it for this video, guys. It means a lot to us and to our team. If you click like right now and you click subscribe, this is how we know that this video was valuable, that it helped you, and especially your comments. I personally read every single comment and reply to as many as I can. And the best news is whenever we share free tips and advice and it works for you and you get your score and we get good news. 
This is the best, seeing people get their scores, get their acceptances, get their registrations and their PR. So leave a comment, like, and I'll see you in the next video.